Oh, we back. The 12 days of MLB rankings have officially started today with the catchers, where I will rank the best catcher from every team in Major League Baseball and do that for the next 12 days until we get to Christmas Day, where I rank the top 50 players in Major League Baseball. This is the fifth season that I have done this, and it's always a banger. So I appreciate all the amazing support you guys show to this series every single year. Absolutely love making it, talking baseball with you guys. So make sure you get in the comment section down below and let me know what you think of my rankings. I'm sure you're going to say, Mark, they're perfect because they always are. Drop a like on the video because there's an immense amount of work that goes into these as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on the content coming at you these next 12 days. Follow me on my social media at GiraffeNickMark, links in the description. And without further ado, let's get started on the 12 days of rankings with the catchers. Here we go, back getting it started with the 32nd ranked catcher in Major League Baseball, newly acquired Chicago White Sox, Max Sassy. Now, Max Sassy did take a year off from baseball last year, some crazy things going on personally in his life. The last time we did see him play though in 2022, he had a pretty horrible season for a guy who was kind of a bit on the up and up, took a Big step back in 2022, nine homers, 12 doubles, 30 RBIs, and a 571 OPS with an OPS plus of 62. Doesn't really matter how good your defense is. When you're hitting that much below league average, it's going to be tough to get you that much higher. So Max Stassi, number 32 right now. Coming in at number 31, Colorado Rockies catcher Elias Diaz. Elias Diaz did win the All-Star Game MVP last season. That was pretty much the pinnacle of the year. Diaz did calm down a lot offensively and ended up finishing with an 86 OPS plus, which is not particularly great, especially when you play in Coors. 14 homers, 25 doubles, 72 RBIs with a 267 average, 725 OPS. The year just wasn't as good as it started, and for a guy who defensively isn't great, is another year older, I gotta put Elias Diaz down towards the bottom. At number 30, I'm a little cautious, but I'm gonna go with Rene Pinto, currently the starting catcher for the Tampa Bay Rays. Pinto is actually kind of a hard-hit barrel machine, but so far in what we've seen in Pinto's career, it hasn't been particularly great. 63 games, 188 plate appearances with 8 homers, 6 doubles, and 26 RBIs. Hitting 235 with a 255 on base, 399 slugging, and a 654 OPS. Got to see a lot more out of Rene Pinto before we can make a real call, but right now, got him at number 30. Keeping it in the American League East for the Boston Red Sox, right now their starting catcher appears to be Connor Wong, who's going to come in at number 29, like I said. Wong showed spurts of being a really good catcher last year defensively, has some strong suits for sure, but at the end of the day, when you're talking about the best catchers in the game, he's not going to be towards the top of this list. 126 games last year, 25 doubles, 9 homers, and 36 RBIs, hitting two. 35 with a 288 on base, 385 slugging, and a 673 OPS for an OPS plus at 80. You're starting to get the gist of the catchers down here. They're just the guys who are a little bit below average right now. Coming in as the 28th best catcher in Major League Baseball, Oakland A's, Shea Langoliers. Langoliers had an okay first season. Defensively, though, was kind of all over the place. Like, he's great at throwing out runners, but he was horrible at blocking and framing, which are super important. And while he did hit 20 homers, it kind of just really didn't mean that much. He finished with an OPS plus at 90. 205 average, 268 on base, 413 slugging, 681 OPS. I'm not really seeing that top end talent yet out of Shea Langoliers. Defensively, he's all over the place. That arm is a cannon, but need to see him be a little more consistent with the bat at the plate. Next up at number 27, Jan Gomes of the Chicago Cubs. Jan Gomes, low key, 36 years old and had a pretty good season last year, but that doesn't mean I think he's one of the top catchers in the game right now, especially going to be 36 years old. Last year, 10 homers, 20 doubles, 63 RBIs, hitting 267 with a 315 on base, 408 slugging, 723 OPS. Jan Gomes is a solid catcher on a team that's loaded with talent, but by no means is he one of the top catchers in the game right now, especially at his age. Just outside the top 25 at number 26, newly acquired Marlins catcher Christian Bethencourt. Bethencourt is an interesting case because he crushes lefties. He's a barrel king, but last year we saw him struggle. The Rays ended up getting rid of him in the offseason, and the numbers, they were just kind of lackluster. For the last two years, he's gotten over 600 plate appearances, to which he has 22 homers, 33 doubles, 67 RBIs, a 162 game average of 17 homers and 53 RBIs a year, hitting 239, doesn't get on base, not a lot of slugging, 663 OPS. Again, similarly, like he does some things well, but not the greatest. Getting the top 25 started at number 25, L Kraken, Gary Sanchez. I was actually trying to put Gary a little bit higher in this list. That being said, going into his 31 year old season, for a guy who's kind of on the outskirts right now, still not signed to a team currently, I had to pull it back a little bit. He did improve though last year in 2023, had a nice little season with the Padres. 72 games, 19 homers, 9 doubles, 47 RBIs, hitting 217 with a 288 on base, 492 slugging, and in 780 OPS, OPS plus at 113. Defensively improved, but I still need to see a little bit more out of Gary Sanchez before I start getting him back into like that top 20 conversation. There's just younger, better guys that I'd personally want right now. Speaking of which, one of those players that I think is due for a bounce back season, Tyler Stevenson of the Cincinnati Reds coming in at number 24. Stevenson just consistently deals with injuries. Last year was the most healthy of his career, played in 142 
too, but the numbers just weren't there offensively. And for a guy who defensively isn't that strong, need to see a little bit more, but I'm not giving up hope just yet because that bat is very good. 13 homers, 20 doubles, 56 RBIs, hitting 243 with a 317 on base, 378 slugging, 696 OPS. In Cincinnati, need to see an improvement, need to see him play better. This team could use his bat. I expect a bounce back year. Michael Jordan number up next at 23, New York Yankees rookie catcher Austin Wells. Pleasantly surprised with what I saw from Wells in 19 games last year at the major league level. Definitely showed some pop in that bat. Four homers, six doubles, and 13 RBIs. The slash line doesn't look great. 229, 257, 486 though is nice with the 742 OPS. It's hard to really gauge exactly what Wells is going to look like next year, truthfully, but he looks like a guy who at worst could probably be a league average hitter because he does have a good barrel rate with below average defensive numbers. So that kind of puts him here in these like low to mid 20s. Ooh, one of my favorites here coming in at number 22, Andy Rodriguez, catcher of the Pirates. Now the Pirates catching situation seems like it's going to be pretty fluid. And while Andy Rodriguez did not have a great season last year in 186 at bats, I expect him to bounce back. He's a very good player, just a personal favorite of mine. Three homers, seven doubles, two triples, 13 RBIs, hitting 220 with a 284 on base, 328 slugging, 612 OPS for an OPS plus at 67. This might be the one where people get a little bit mad because there's particularly no reason I love Andy as much as I do. Like he's good behind the plate defensively. He doesn't swing and miss, doesn't chase, hits the ball pretty hard. Just need to see him play a little bit better probably before I really start hyping him up. Good athlete too, by the way. Just missing out on the top 20, coming in at number 21, I'm gonna go with Jake Rogers, catcher for the Detroit Tigers. Jake Rogers, like Loki, did some things really well last year, particularly at the plate. I mean, the guy has some crazy red numbers all over the place. Great framer, great blocker, like defensively very strong. And at the plate, while he does swing and miss a lot, he does strike out. He hits the ball very, very hard. He had a sweet spot percentage last year in the 95th percentile, one of the highest in Major League Baseball. So this is a guy who, when he hits it, he barrels up the ball pretty consistently and plays pretty good defense. I'll put Jake Rogers right around the top 20. Getting the top 20 started at number 20. I'm going to give him one more shot, Salvador Perez. I love Salvi. And until Salvi retires or truthfully proves to me that he's like done, I can't not put him in the top 20. Of course, the game has diminished a little bit. The power wasn't as good as it was in previous years. 23 homers, 21 doubles, and 80 RBIs, though, is not too bad. With a 255 average, 292 on base, 422 slug, and 714 OP. Yes, the reason he's dropping is though defensively he's getting worse and worse every year. Love Salvi, he's a legend, but we're starting to get to that dangerous territory of he's looking really old. Coming in at number 19, young Washington Nationals catcher Kaber Ruiz. I love Kaber. I think he's a very, very solid player, and I think we're gonna see him get better and better as the year goes on. I feel like we saw him improve upon his season last year in 2023. 18 homers, 24 doubles, 67 RBIs, all career highs across the board, with a 260 average, 308 on base, 409 slugging, and a 77. 17 OPS for an OPS plus just under 197. Now defensively, Haber was horrible, but I've watched him catch and he just doesn't seem like he's as bad as maybe the numbers say. This one's going to be a little bit of a bias pick again because I like Haber. I think he's a very, very good player and I think we're going to see him possibly break out this upcoming season. So I'm being aggressive putting him at 19. Next up, coming in at number 18, catcher for the Los Angeles Angels, Logan Ohapi. After dealing with a bit of a freak injury to start the year, Logan Ohapi did end up coming back and finished with a very strong season. 51 games, 14 homers, 6 doubles, 29 RBIs with a 236 average, 296 on base, 500 slugging, and a 796 OPS for an OPS plus at 111. So he was above average. Of course, we take everything with a grain of salt because he's basically played 60 games at the major league level, but he definitely has some real pop in that bat. Defensively needs improvement, which is why I'm not going crazy high with him in that small sample, but he can definitely swing it. And I think 18 is a very fair spot. Coming in at the number 17 spot, Luis Campusano, catcher of the Padres. He better be the catcher every day. He was awesome last year in the small sample that we saw him at the end of the season. 49 games, 7 homers, 7 doubles, 30 RBIs, hitting 319 with a 356 on base, 491 slugging, 847 OPS. Yes, it's a small sample, so realistically, probably not going to have that slash line, but he was barreling up the ball well, wasn't swinging and missing, barely struck out, needs to walk a little bit more, needs to improve defensively, but the offensive guts are there for Luis Campusano to be a very good catcher in Major League Baseball, and with more consistent playing time, I expect you're going to see him rise up these rankings by next year. Right at the halfway point in today's video at number 16, Cleveland Guardians catcher, Bo Naylor. Brother of Josh, Bo looked great last year. Similarly, small sample, only 67 games, but 11 homers, 13 doubles, 32 RBIs, while having a 339 on base, 809 OPS with an OPS plus at 124. Those are all things I love to see from a young left-handed hitting catcher. Something you don't see too often at the major league level is just a lefty that catches and hits. Similarly to a lot of the young catchers in today's rankings, I am pretty high on him, but I want to 
to temper expectations a little bit because it was a smaller sample. But he walked a ton, put the ball in play, was pretty good defensively. These are all good things that make you excited for Bo Naylor's future. These next two are a bit of a package deal. I put them next to each other because I think this is also fair for them. Starting it off at number 15 with the first Blue Jays catcher, Alejandro Kirk. Kirk got really high in my rankings last year, and to be fair, he had a crazy 2022. 2023, he struggled a little bit more, came back down to earth. You're not seeing these crazy numbers from him. Still doesn't strike out at all. Still a solid player, but the power did drop off from 14 home runs to eight. The RBIs dropped off. Everything was down from the previous year, so we got to take a step back with Alejandro Kirk. Still a good catcher, still all around great, but maybe not as elite as I once thought. And of course, I mentioned the package deal. Number 14 is going to be his teammate, platoon mate, Danny Jansen. Danny Jansen, on the other hand, really good season again. Someone I keep wanting to throw respect on his name. Of course, because he's a platoon, we have to take a little bit of a step back, and he did go down technically offensively last year, but we did see a career high in home runs at 17, 53 RBIs, 15 doubles. The average went down, the on-base went down, the slugging went down, but still a 786 OPS on the season. In a platoon with Kirk, you put those two together, you have a top 10 catcher. On their own, a little bit low. For the 13th best catcher in Major League Baseball for the 2024 season, I'm going with Patrick Bailey of the San Francisco Giants. I think the Giants might have found a great player here. Now, Bailey does have to improve a little bit offensively. A lot of swing and miss, wasn't getting on base much. But defensively, I mean, he was absolutely disgusting. And to be fair, that was his scouting report coming out of NC State. He was a great defensive catcher who hopefully the bat would improve. We saw glimpses of Patrick Bailey being able to show that bat talent. Seven homers, 18 doubles, 48 RBIs in 97 games really did help the Giants out. But defensively is where he shined, and that's where he'll continue to shine for his career. Let's see where the bat goes. Another great young catcher coming up here at number 12, Gabriel Moreno of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Moreno defensively was fantastic last year. Blocks above average, 94th percentile. Caught stealing. He was disgusting, 100th percentile. He was like the best at throwing out runners last year. Awesome pop time. Framing, not so much, but he's another guy who doesn't swing and miss, puts the ball in play, has hit the ball hard for sure. Just not really doing it for power just yet, which is why he's a little bit lower on this. Still, in his rookie season, he won a gold glove, seven homers, 19 doubles, 50 RBIs, hitting 284 with a 339 on base, 408 slugging, and a 747 OPS for an OPS plus at 104. There's definitely good guts here. He's only 24 years old. We're going to see him improve upon the season he had and a guy who's definitely going to find his way into the top 10 if all things stay the same. And then just missing out on the top 10 coming in at number 11, of course, my boy Francisco Alvarez, El Troll of the New York Mets. Alvarez came onto the scene so hot last year, cooled off in the second half, but still at only 21 years of age, he hit 25 homers, 12 doubles, 63 RBIs from the catcher position, something that only Johnny Bench basically had ever done before in Major League Baseball history. 209 average was low, 284 on base, want to see it get a little bit higher, but that 437 slugging still gave him an OPS at 721 and defensively Alvarez was actually surprisingly good for a guy who got the rep of not being very great behind the plate obviously crushes the ball hits it hard all things you love to see really excited with how young he is and how good he was already this is a guy who should be a top 10 catcher by the end of the season getting the top 10 started at the number 10 spot Yiner Diaz of the Houston Astros he's the man who's finally going to kick Martin Maldonado out of Houston apparently this dude mashed last year now defensively he's got a lot to work on with the framing great at blocking great at throwing out runners. Those are really important right now in Major League Baseball. At the plate, while he does swing and miss and chase a little bit, doesn't strike out, but he also doesn't walk. Crushes the ball, though. Barrel king, and you saw it in the offensive numbers. 23 homers, 60 RBIs with 22 doubles last season, 104 games. 282 average, 308 on base. Again, doesn't walk. 538 slugging and an 846 OPS, though, for an OPS plus at 128. Loki might have deserved more Rookie of the Year votes. Yiner Diaz was really good. Someone to keep an eye out for this upcoming season. The power is legit. Okay, here me out. Number nine, Ryan Jeffers of the Minnesota Twins. I know, sounds crazy. This guy's been a backup, but Jeffers is, by the way, sneaky, only 26 years old, and he had a career season last year for a guy who had been waiting to break out, was always a barrel king, Exavilos, fantastic defensively behind the plate. Now it looks like he's going to be the everyday catcher, coming off a career season where he had 14 homers, 15 doubles, 43 RBIs in 96 games, 276 average, 369 on base, 490 slugging, 858 OPS for an OPS plus at 134. I really hope they give him the every time gig. He's a very good player. He popped off last year. He's a dude who has like similar power potential to when we saw Mitch Garver break out in Minnesota, except he's also good defensively. So keep an eye out for Jeffers. He's a beast. Big boy from North Carolina. For the eighth best catcher in Major League Baseball for the 2024 season, I'm going to head out to St. Louis to talk about Wilson Contreras. I don't care how bad he is defensively. I don't care if he's not Yadier Molina back there. Wilson Contreras is still one of the 10 best catchers in the league. Offensively last year, he was great again. One of the better hitters in that Cardinals lineup, despite getting a ton of crap all year long. 20 homers, 27 doubles, 67 RBIs with a 2 
264 average, 358 on base, 467 slugging, and an 826 OPS. OPS plus at 124. Defensively, by the way, he was still throwing out runners at an above average rate. He was very good with the pop time and caught stealing. Just framing and blocking wise, maybe gets a little lazy, but the dude mashes. That's what you pay him for. This is a top 10 catcher. And if you don't think he is, you're probably overvaluing framing where at this point with how the game has changed with stealing, it's way more important right now that he's thrown out these runners trying to take an extra base. Coming in at number seven, I'm going to go with Jonah Heim. We've been throwing respect on Jonah Heim's name here more and more ever since we stopped and he's continued to get better. Last year, of course, World Series champion with the Rangers, won a gold glove, made the all-star team, 18 homers, 28 doubles, 95 RBIs, which is gross, 258 average, 317 on base, 438 slugging, and a 755 OPS for an OPS plus at 103. Obviously, defensively, framing King, great at throwing out runners last year. He hit very well, gets on base at a pretty good clip. There's nothing not to like about Jonah Heim as well as he's a switch hitter. This guy continues to improve, and I expect big things out of him in Texas again in 2024. Just outside my top five, though, at number seven. Just missing out on the top five at number six. I'm going with Cal Raleigh, catcher, of course, of the Seattle Mariners. This one was so tough. I've been fighting back and forth whether I wanted to put him six or five. I'm going with six here. I feel good about it. Cal Raleigh's very good, though. In the last two years at the catcher position, 57 home runs, 138 RBIs with a 767 OPS. He gets on base at a decent clip for his average. Obviously has some really good pop and defensively is a very solid catcher. Looking at a guy with an OPS plus at 116 the last two seasons where he's been the everyday catcher of the Seattle Mariners. Another switch hitter. Crazy pop though. Someone that uh, needs to get a little more respect. Big dumper. Is almost elite I think at the catcher position. Just outside the top five at six though. Because coming in at number five, a big riser in today's video, William Contreras of the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers did it again. They took a guy who defensively was whatever and made him a leap behind the plate. William Contreras was disgusting defensively last season. Blocks above average, 85th percentile. Framing, 93rd percentile. Something that he was pretty horrible at in the past. And then, of course, at the plate, that's where he really shines. Hard hit rate through the roof. Average exit velos. Barrel king. Got on base. Didn't strike out. And he finished with a career season. 17 homers, 38 doubles, 78 RBIs in the first full-time gig ever for him. 289 average, 367 on base, 457 slugging, 825 OPS. For an OPS plus at 125, the dude finished 11th in the MVP voting. William Contreras is a great player. He's awesome. Great pickup by the Brewers last year. He's a top five catcher in the game. Dropping down a few spots here, but still one of the better catchers in the game, JT Realmuto of the Philadelphia Phillies coming in at number four. We probably saw the worst season of JT Realmuto's career last year since his rookie season. 135 games, finished with a career low OPS plus at 106, again, since the rookie season. 20 homers, 28 doubles, 63 RBIs. Still stole 16 bases. The athleticism is still there. 252 average, 310 on base, 452 slugging. It was just a down year for him. He is getting older. He'll be 33 next season, and the Phillies really play him like so much. He's played over 130 games in every single season he's been with the Phillies outside of the COVID year. Probably just a little tired, so he might not be the best catcher in Major League Baseball anymore, but JT Realmuto is still very good, and I think number four is a really fair spot for him. Coming in as the third best catcher in Major League Baseball, Atlanta Braves, Sean Murphy. Now, of course, you do have Travis Darno. Darno would find his way pretty high up on this list. He's still very solid, but Sean Murphy, clearly the better catcher of the two, in my opinion. I think he's the third best catcher in baseball. He started off the year so incredibly hot, cooled off in the second half, but still, regardless, at the plate and behind the plate, you're getting elite stuff for a catcher at this position. 108 games, 21 homers, 21 doubles, 68 RBIs, hitting 251 with a 365 on base, 478 slugging, 844 OPS is just disgusting for an OPS plus at 125. He's put up an OPS plus of 120 or higher, four out of the five seasons he's played. He was an all-star, and again, defensively, Sean Murphy is one of the best in the league. 100 percentile in blocks above average, framing 92nd percentile, every Everything is red on his baseball savant. It's one of the best catchers in baseball. You could make the argument he could maybe be the best catcher in baseball. We'll see who's ahead of him now because coming in at number two, just missing on that elusive crown is the best catcher in the game, Will Smith of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Will Smith did have a little bit of a down year last year, did still make the all-star team, but the numbers dropped off a little bit. That being said, I'm not worried. He's still a stud. He's still great. 19 homers, 21 doubles, 76 RBIs in that loaded lineup, 261 average, 359 on base, 438 slugging, and a 797 OPS for an OPS. OPS plus at 114. Defensively improved behind the plate as well. Still good at blocking. Great pop time last year. And I mean, he just doesn't swing and miss. He gets on base, hits the ball hard. Again, all the things that you'd like from a top tier catcher. I might maybe be a little higher on Will Smith than a couple of you, but I do think Will Smith, in my opinion, is the second best catcher in Major League Baseball. Criminally underrated at the position. But of course, coming in at number one, you guys know him. Former number one overall pick by the Baltimore Orioles in the 2019 MLB draft. That's of course going to be Adley Rushman. 
Adley is just so good. It's crazy what he's been able to do in two seasons with the Orioles. Completely turn this franchise around. Finished 12th in the MVP voting in 2022. Second in Rookie of the Year. Ninth this year in MVP voting. Was an All-Star. Won a Silver Slugger. Had a career season. Was great behind the plate. Like, there's nothing this guy doesn't do well. 20 homers, 31 doubles, 80 RBIs last season in 154 games. The guy's a warrior back there. 277 average, 374 on base, 435 slugging, 809 OPS for an OPS plus at 128. Defensively destroyed. Disgusting. Doesn't swing and miss. Gets on base. Doesn't strike out. Hits the ball hard. There's nothing he doesn't do well. He is clear and obvious the best catcher in all of Major League Baseball. If you have anybody else at this position, you're wrong. It's Adley Rushman. The dude changed the Orioles organization. Changed the way that we're probably looking at the catcher position too. Like he's just so good and he's a switch hitter. God, I love Adley. This dude's a stud. Best catcher in Major League Baseball. So there they are. The top 30-ish catchers in Major League Baseball. The best one from every team and a couple free agents sprinkled in there. I'd love to know what you guys think about my ranking rankings in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree with me? Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the rankings coming at you this Christmas. Check the description down below. You can follow me on all my social media there. Links are in description. And that's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. This will be a link to the playlist for the 12 days of MLB rankings for this year. And this will be a link to the playlist for last year's rankings in case you want to go back and see how I did. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you all tomorrow for the first base rankings. Bye!